Uh, here we have a calculation for the analysis of a bolt. Uh, let's start uh, this problem simply and let's just imagine our bolted connection here. Uh, so we have uh, a bolted connection uh, bolting two plates together or two items together and to the joint we apply uh, a tensile force and a shear force. Let's just imagine for a moment that we've just fastened the nut up finger tight and there's no uh, tension in the bolt before we apply the loads. So here we have a plot of uh, bolt tension versus the uh, load applied to the joint and quite simply it shows that as you increase the load applied to the, the joint the load in the bolt is exactly the same value so we have a straight line and as we increase the load that's applied to the joint uh, at some point we will yield the bolt and at another point we will uh, go past the ultimate tensile load of the bolt and it will break. But that isn't really how we use bolts. Uh, what we do is we put some uh, initial tension into the bolt by torque tightening generally. So I'm going to put some more information on the curve to show what happens. This calculation uh, uh, has put in some uh, pretension into the bolt here. So the starting point for our bolt now is a, a tensile load of about 140 kilonewtons. Now when I begin to apply my load to the bolt two things happen. One thing is that we increase the tension in the bolt. But the second thing that happens is that we relieve the compression uh, uh, within the compression load path of the joint. So we can see two lines here. This is the increase in load in the bolt and the yellow line is an in, uh, a decrease in clamping load. Now for uh, the uh, joint to be capable of sustaining a shear force a clamping load needs to be present because we're going to rely upon friction uh, to uh, carry the shear load. So you can see what happens as we keep on applying loads and applying loads and applying loads we haven't yielded the bolt but what happens is the contact force uh, goes to zero. So in fact this bolt, uh, this bolted joint is just separating before we hit the yield and I've quite deliberately uh, set that to be uh, this value is 95% of the yield value uh, and that's uh, quite a, a sensible thing to use and I'll come on to explain that in a minute. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about um, the gradients of these lines. Uh, they, uh, the proportion of load that goes into the bolt depends upon the stiffness of the bolt and the stiffness of the compression load path. Now uh, there's lots of detailed calculations we can do uh, uh, to uh, calculate um, these two stiffnesses but typically for a um, for a steel bolt uh, we can use a value of about 0.24. So what this is really saying is that about 24 percent of the force you apply to a bolted joint, to a steel joint anyway, uh, goes into increasing the tension in the bolt and the remainder, uh, the 76 percent, uh, goes into reducing the clamp force. So that's an important factor there, this stiffness factor and it's defining the gradients of these lines here. Uh, the next uh, thing that's important, uh, I, I should have probably already, already mentioned this, this is, um, this is a thread factor uh, and uh, what, it, it, what it does, it tells us how much preload we will get in a bolt uh, for a given applied tightening torque. And obviously the less friction there is in the thread and the less friction that there is uh, under the thread then the more uh, load you wind into your bolt tension um, rather than uh, lose the effort in friction. So we can see we get different values here depending upon how well lubricated our bolts are. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use uh, 0.2 uh, which is a, a standard value for an as received bolt 
but you can see if we uh, lubricated with uh, molybdenum disulfide then we can start to reduce that or we could use PTFE we can reduce that even further and what that means is that we get more pretension for a given tightening torque there's also a tightening factor and this tightening factor uh, uh, if you like if we took um, 50 volts and we uh, tested them all with the same tightening torque we will find there, there is a spread in the pretensions that you uh, find or the pretensions that you measure uh, and the reason for that is that the thread characteristics are slightly different the friction characteristics are slightly different uh, it can also be because of the accuracy of your uh, tightening method but uh, there's there's always a, a, a tightening factor and uh, I'm using a, a standard value for uh, uh, for torque tightening bolts and what this is really saying is it's a value of 0.6 it, it says that we're getting we will get a maximum pretension value but we'll also get a minimum and the minimum will be about 60 percent of the maximum so I'm going to draw that on our diagram now we've already got our maximum pretension I'm going to pop on our minimum pretension case and you can see the two pretensions here with that before we apply load so there's two pretension values um, and you can see because this is starting at a lower pretension value uh, then as we apply load to the joint this uh, uh, this value begins this joint begins to separate obviously sooner than uh, a joint with a higher pretension value that that kind of makes sense so um, we can see that we could have if we tighten our bolt we could have our pretension anywhere between these two values and uh, we have to make sure that when we do a design that we uh, very carefully uh, uh, pay attention to this to this spread